Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing bradykinin-induced vasodilatation. So, so far we've discussed how bradykinin causes the endothelial cells to release nitric oxide. Nitric oxide diffuses to the smooth muscle cells surrounding the endothelial cells and activates the soluble guanylate cyclase of the alpha-1, beta-1 form. It causes the heme group, the prosthetic heme group, attached to the beta-1 subunit to fall off, which then activates the enzyme, uh, which starts converting guanosine triphosphate into cyclic guanosine monophosphate. We now need to see how cyclic guanosine monophosphate is going to cause uh, the relaxation of the smooth muscle. So, so far, we've got cyclic GMP going up in the cytoplasm of our cell. Okay, so cyclic GMP is going to bind to and activate an enzyme known as myosin like uh, sorry, not, not yet. It's going to bind to and activate an enzyme known as cyclic GMP dependent protein kinase. Or a slightly cooler name for this is protein kinase G. So this is cyclic GMP dependent protein kinase or you might just hear it referred to as protein kinase G. Okay, so also referred to as PKG for protein kinase G. Right, okay, so cyclic GMP binds to and activates this protein kinase G enzyme here. Okay, so what's protein kinase G going to do then? Well, um, it's going to cause the smooth muscle cell to relax, but how? Well, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to phosphorylate and activate an enzyme known as myosin light chain phosphatase. Not myosin light chain kinase anymore, myosin light chain phosphatase. So here we've stuck a phosphate group onto this uh, myosin light chain phosphatase, which I'll draw in green here. Okay, so this is myosin light chain phosphatase with this phosphate group now stuck onto it. And basically, well, the clues in the name for this enzyme, what it does, with regards to what it does, myosin light chain phosphatase removes the phosphate groups from the myosin light chains, which the myosin light chain kinase enzyme put on. And if you remember, the way that you activated the myosin light chains was by phosphorylating them and then they begun the process of contraction basically so if you remove those phosphate groups you're going to stop them contracting and myosin light chain phosphatase is often abbreviated to MLCP just like myosin light chain kinase was abbreviated to MLCK Okay, so that's one of the ways you're going to stop contraction of the smooth muscle by directly removing the phosphate groups that the myosin light chain kinase is putting on. Another way that go you're going to is going to happen is uh, the cyclic GMP dependent protein kinase or protein kinase G is going to work on the proteins that are in the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum, namely the IP3 receptor and the circa pump here. Okay, so remember long ago, now, I told you um, that the calcium waves were generated by the IP3 um, uh, allowing calcium to come out of, well, allowing calcium to leave the endoplasmic reticulum through it, and then they were terminated by circa pumping the calcium back in. So, the cyclic GMP dependent protein kinase is going to activate uh, circa, so that it pumps calcium in uh, quicker, it returns calcium back into the endoplasmic reticulum quicker, and it's going to inactivate, so it's going to inactivate this one, the IP3 receptor, and it's going to activate the circa pump, so it will activate this one, inhibit this one. So if you inhibit the IP3 receptor, then you're going to release less calcium, and if you activate the circuit, you're going to result in the calcium being pumped in quicker. So this is all designed to stop the calcium signals, basically, and reduce the amount of calcium that is getting into the cytoplasm. Okay, now if you reduce the amount of calcium getting into the cytoplasm, you reduce the amount of calcium calmodulin complexes. The calcium calmodulin complexes were what activated myosin light chain kinase. So by reducing the calcium signal, you reduce the activity of myosin light chain kinase. So myosin light chain kinase activity is going to go down. So, 
The enzyme that adds the phosphate groups onto those myosin heads and begins the process of contraction, its activity is going down. The enzyme which takes the phosphate groups off the myosin heads and stops contraction, its activity is going to go up. So overall, the amount of cross-bridge cycling that's going to occur in your smooth muscle cells is going to go down. And that's going to uh, reduce the contraction of these smooth muscle cells and cause them to relax. If the smooth muscle cells relax, then the circumference of that uh, circular lining, uh, that circular sort of, um, uh, that circle of smooth muscle cells, it's going to increase basically, meaning that the diameter of the uh, circle of smooth muscle cells will increase, meaning that the lumen of the blood vessel increases, causing vasodilatation.